Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, join you on the Palm Talk. Uh, this time I'll talk about our experience in reconstruction of the lower limb bone defects after sarcoma resection in children using vascularized fibril transfer. Uh, <clears throat> we have a long-term follow-up in it of 11 patients with lower limb uh, tumors. The average age at operation was 14 years. Uh, all the tumors except one were high-grade sarcoma, stage 2A and 2B, and even sarcoma. Uh, these uh, kids were operated fairly late. The average tumor size was 200 cubic cc's. The resulting defects averaged about 15 centimeters. The fibula was inserted as a single strut in eight patients and double strut in three patients. The fixation was augmented using interlocking nail, bridge plates, or external fixture. We uh, always resect the tumor with wide local margin resection. Uh, we keep the resection three centimeters above the visual limit by using the MRI. The excision may be intra-articular resecting one part of the joint, extra-articular resecting the joint proximal and distal, or intercalary if it doesn't involve the joint. We use uh, the uh, osteoseptocutaneous fibril flap uh, raised on the posterior septum, including the uh, septocutaneous perforator from the perineal artery. Uh, we have used external fixture in the beginning. Uh, intramedullary nails, bridging, or bridge plates in the later part of the series. Uh, the patients kept in the ICU for five days to observe the scan monitors, scan monitor flap, and we used extra and intravenously for five days in addition to antibiotics. The patient discharged after two weeks. Uh, the patients allowed to crutch walking starting from the second, third post-operative week on the uh, sound limb from which we have harvested the fibula. Uh, the partial weight bearing is allowed after union and progress, progress to full weight bearing on, uh, depending on the hypertrophy of the graft. We all know the uh, problems of the vascularized fibrillar graft for reconstructing the lower limb defects. Uh, these problems have been cited frequently in the literature. Hypertrophy is unpredictable. Uh, it requires brace protection for one year or more. Uh, the graft fractures frequently in addition to the technical difficulties and donor side morbidities in this case. And I will show you how we have solved these problems in our series. This is a case of male patient, 14 years old. He has chondrosarcoma of type 2B. After a section uh, of 18 centimeter intercarabial section, this is union have uh, this is, we, we have used a vascularized fibril graft fixed with the uh, interlocking intermedullary nail. Uh, you can see uh, union after three months. He started forward bearing after six months. And you, have, you have seen the complete graft hypertrophy at 100% of the femoral diameter at three years. This is another example of osteosarcoma in a male patient, 16 years old. Uh, Interarticular resection was performed, and the diff including the whole quadriceps muscle, the whole quadriceps mechanism only left the skin and the neurovascular bundle. The defect uh, measured 19 centimeter. Union was achieved after uh, three months, and you can see the uh, sequence of hypertrophy. This is after 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, and after around uh, four five years, uh, this is a complete graft hypertrophy reaching the uh, diameter of the femoral, original femoral diameter. Uh, hypertrophy is 100 to 200% measured after 15 months, and the fluid bearing on, this, on the operated limb was uh, possible after only seven months. This is another example of Ewing sarcoma in a girl uh, 11 years old. The resection was done transficial, leaving the physis intact. Uh, after resection, the defect was 10 centimeter. The fixation was really primitive and poor. We have used one third tuber plate bent at the condola, small, two small condola plates. And you can see the fixation is only uh, 
uh, is very primitive. However, uni was achieved after four months. You, you can see you can see the hypertrophy was reached 60%. Uh, the fibula was inserted as a double barrel fibula, double barrel graft. Uh, hypertrophy uh, reached 60% after only two year, around two years. Fluid bearing was possible after six months and she has got full range of motion of the operating room. It's very interesting that uh, the physis continue to grow and after five years, the cross of the physis has broken the uh, plate fixation. This is another example of the proximal tibia in a male 15 years old, osteosarcoma. The defect after resection was 16 centimeters. Uh, <clears throat> this is after three months. We have got failure of the plate at one year and uh, was uh, replaced by a broad DCB. And this is after 20 months with hypertrophy, uh, 150%. And again, for full width bearing was uh, uh, possible after only six months. Another example, osteosarcoma of the proximal tibia. Uh, the defect was 13 centimeter. Uh, this time the fibula is inserted at the double barrel free fibula draft. Union is achieved in only four months. And you can see uh, the sequence of hypertrophy after uh, around seven years. Uh, he was a survivor. Hypertrophy reached about 100% after 69 months. Uh, follow the bearing. After all, we have 100% survival rate. Uh, we have got 100% overall, overall union rate, 9 to 100% primary, and uh, one case after second operation. The time to union only uh, averaged uh, around four months, between three and eight months. And the time for, to follow with bearing was only six months, with an, uh, between six and 10 months. We have got at the end of follow up, uh, three centimeter shorts, zero to three centimeter short. We have required uh, five procedures to achieve union in one case, one case of stress fractures, donor site complications in six cases, and local complications cases, mostly mild infection. Graft hypertrophy reached around 96% after an average of uh, 38 or three years, 38 months. Old three years. The musculoskeletal tumor society score after one year was 21 and finally it was 23 points. We have got only two uh, local recurrence and four metastases or co alternate driver disease. Uh, when we talk especially about graft hypertrophy, <clears throat> we have found that uh, graft does not occur before union. And it progresses at a speed of uh, approximately 3.3% for months relative to the uh, received bone damage. The hypertrophy reaches a peak after 12 months postoperatively and uh, stops occur, it ceases occur after 24 months. No significant hypertrophy occurs after uh, two years postoperative. It is uh, interesting to know it's significantly correlated to the patient's age and the length of follow up and is not affected by the chemotherapy. This demonstrates the effect of age and the chemotherapy on the upper series of uh, X-rays. Represent a patient is 12 years who had osteosarcoma and received chemotherapy. Uh, you can see on the bottom X-rays have uh, uh, belong to a patient who is who, who was 25 years old, had joint cell tumor, and received no chemotherapy. You can see after six months, the hypertrophy uh, averaged 25% in the younger patients, uh, opposed to 0% uh, in older patients, uh, around 90% after one year, and 100% uh, after 30 months, compared to only 30% in the older patients. So it's very much correlated to the age of the patients and is not related to chemotherapy. Uh, to conclude that uh, what we have, uh, our experience in the vascular fever graft, it fights infection. It has a predictable function. It's durable. And this, of course, is a less expensive technique.
to conclude, the vascularized fibroglyphs is a reliable technique for lower limb reconstruction for tumor section in children. The refinements in the internal fixation technique resulted in early restoration of function and do not prevent graft hypertrophy. Early eroding of the transferred fibula as soon as the graft union is achieved is essential for early hypertrophy. And hypertrophy is related to the duration of follow-up and age of the patient is not affected by chemotherapy and length of the defect or the anatomical site in the lower limb. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Gamal. <laughs> So uh, I visited Professor El Gamal like 10 years ago, and I, I, it, it was amazing. Because they have a, a influence area of 20 million people. So they, they have a microsurgical unit in which they are 10 microsurgeons. They have a, a, a ACU unit and uh, Professor El, El El Gamal is the, the chief of the unit, of course, but currently he's also the president of the Asiut University. Okay, so, and we, we choose this um, topic by the reason he has explained uh, that we, they are able to treat a very expensive problem with a very cheap, a really cheap uh, technique, which is a free, free vascularized fibula graft and a uh, long, uh, cheap plate. That's why we, we choose this, because we are used to um, prosthesis, <laughs> humoral prosthesis, allografts, uh, physial distraction, etc. So my first question is, do you have experience with physial distraction? This is one of the questions. And the other one is, do you have experience with a combination of fibula with the allograft or a, autograft, but um, under liquid nitrogen to sterilize the, the cells, please. Yeah, uh, let me explain, Chesco. Uh, we frequently see the children in, uh, because we have very wide referral area. You said 20 million, now it's 40 million or more. Of course. Uh, we, oh, yes, and we have very long waiting list. And so we frequently see the children late. You see the average tumor volume is 200 cc's. We, we, have, we never see bone uh, lesions alone uh, because we never see children complaining of pain only. We have seen children with big masses. Uh, so uh, the only thing is to resect. When we resect, we resect aggressively the whole sensor mechanism, uh, including the quadriceps and everything. We only leave a tube of skin and neurovascular boundary. So we, we had never the chance of using uh, tumor prothesis or physical destruction. We have, not, we have not got the chance to apply these techniques. It's very rare to see uh, children with uh, isolated bone lesion, no masses. So uh, we, we have never used it, get the chance to uh, use either technique, Pfizer distraction or, but uh, we, we don't see the necessity of using allograft or combine allograft with vascularized uh, fibula. It's a very reliable technique. Uh, you can see uh, it hypertrophies and it, in a predictable way. Uh, we have never seen the necessity to combine with, even in the proximal femur with uh, allograft or use allograft alone. Okay, so does it mean if, if you uh, received the patients earlier, would you try different techniques for reconstruction? Of course, of course, yes, <clears throat> of course. Uh, for example, instead of using the uh, uh, fusion of the knee, we can, of course, can use prosthesis. Uh, we have, in one case of Ewing sarcoma, I've seen that we have done transfizer section and chest got good range of motion of the knee. Paco, I think you have been doing the periosteum with allograft. Is that true? Yes. Uh, 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 I'm not doing the, um, <clears throat> the combination of fibula with allograft, but uh, periosteum. Uh, without, without, without allograft or no? 
with allograph. Yeah, just it's a variation of the of um, of the Capanas technique. So with that, I get uh, fastest uh, consolidation. But if if the allograft is very long, then I pref prefer to use a fibula because the periosteum retracts like a thirty percent of the length, thirty percent of the length. Yeah. So, Professor El Gamal, are you using uh, periosteum, vascular periosteum, for your reconstructions in tumors or any other of similar problems? Yes, we, we have been using uh, free periosteal transfer for uh, non unions, for uh, congenital pseudosclerosis, especially of the fibula, but uh, we have never use the vascular periosteum transfer for uh, tumors. Because uh, as I said, the excision limit is usually very large. The average excision hour series was 15 centimeters. And we have been exciting femurs like 19, 20 centimeters. Uh, so the uh, indications for vascular periosteum was in another non-oncological uh, reasons like non-unions and uh, sometimes in limited in uh, congenital pseudostrosis. Okay, Paco. We have. So, let me just make it. We have actually. Uh, Dan and I don't take care of many tumors. So we're not a tumor center, but we do do treat kids with bone loss from infection, and we have used the the vascularized fibula even as a double barrel. It is really amazing, like Professor showed, how much it hypertrophies over time. You think it's never going to work because it looks like a little stick, a little matchstick in between these two bone ends. And then if you stick with it over time, it really does hypertrophy. Professor, have you had any uh, delayed unions at one side versus the other side and had to go back and add any autograph or anything like that? No, no, I have never. No, I have never. I, I think the secret is uh, semi-rigid internal fixation. Uh, it allows union, but in the same time, allows controlled stressing of the graft to hypertrophy. This is a secret of the- You mean some, some shared load bearing? Yes, yeah. like bridge plate or interlocking unit. Right, yeah, I think that we had, a, we had one that was delayed that I can think about and I, and I think we used an external fixator and that may have been too much, too much rel stress relieving and not put any stress on yes. the fibula. Yep, yes. right. it's a really good point. We didn't think about it. Okay, uh, Scott, I think we, uh, there are no, no more questions in the chat. Okay, so Paco, so, why don't you why don't you talk about the next session? Uh, it's it's David McComb session. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but but I would like to um, to tell um, to tell people that if they want to go to a center where they do a lot of microsurgery, uh, they could contact uh, Professor uh, El Gamal because it's incredible how many. How Just many microscopes? Let, let, let me add. Now we have progressed from a small unit. We have built a, an institute for hand and microsurgery. Uh, yeah. It includes uh, eight operating rooms, 60 beds, and uh, 20 ICU beds, uh, a guest house. We are, we are going to open it at the end of this year. Okay, incredible. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, well, Paco, Paco, let me just echo that the Al Gamal is one of the hardest working individuals I've ever met. Thank you. So Thank I, you, cousin. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think if you go, you better be prepared to get very, very little sleep and learn a lot about. Uh, <laughs> um, so for the next the next uh, Zoom meeting in four, um, July 14th, I think it is. Uh, we have Peter Waters who's going to speak about supracondylar fracture and neurovascular compromise. Um, Daryl Chu from Singapore is going to talk about radial polydactyly. And Gronya Burke from Leeds in the United Kingdom is going to talk about uh, second toe transfer. So that, uh, that's another uh, great range of, of speakers for our next meeting, which uh, I think is the 14th. Is that right, Tesco? Yeah, uh, it's the eleventh. It's the eleventh. Eleventh of all, July. Always second Sunday of the month. The second Sunday. Second second mm -hmm. Sunday. Eleventh of July. July eleven. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yep.
And so thank you everyone for their, for their time, their, their fantastic conversation and talks. And everybody should please stay safe and we look forward to seeing you in July. Thanks everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bislama. Masalama. Asalama. Ah, <laughs>